Taking photos like these is not as hard as you might think. These are some that I took only on my second attempt with absolutely no experience in high-speed photography. They're far from being the best in the genre, but I'm still happy with the results. I don't think that's a testament to my skills as a photographer, but rather a statement to how it is, in many ways, just a controlled science. To pull this off, you'll need a couple of things. First, you'll need a camera with a manual mode, and ideally one with a trigger input. Next, you'll need a macro lens, and if you're on a budget like me, you can also make do with extension tubes coupled to an existing lens. These will allow you to focus much closer than you'd normally be able to with the same lens. Finally, you'll need an off-camera adjustable flash or speed light. This is the most important piece because it's actually what's freezing the action. I got mine for $30 on Amazon, and I'll provide a link below. Now technically that's all you'll need to get started, but you'll be playing a game of luck, as it'll be your job to trigger the flash at the right moment. Because I like to think I'm a better engineer than I am photographer, I took things a step further to enable precision timing of all the components. The goal here is to have the camera and flash fire at a precise time relative to the moment when a drop is released. But remember, it is the timing of the flash that is important and not the camera's shutter. There are a number of ways we can accomplish this feat, and one way is to use a trigger that will sense when a droplet is falling. My first attempts used this method by employing a laser and a phototransistor. Falling droplets interrupt the beam and then trigger the flash at some defined delay afterward. The advantage to this method is that it is indiscriminate of what interrupts the beam and can be extended to other types of high-speed photography. The disadvantage is that it can be difficult to set up, isn't always reliable, and won't provide a means to achieve droplet collision. The other method, and the one I ended up using, inherently allows for droplet collision by mechanically actuating the droplet release. We can then use this release as a reference time for all other actions. For this method, you'll need additional components. First, you'll need a solenoid valve. I use this one from another project, but the important features are that it is normally closed and can be actuated at speeds on the order of 20 milliseconds. You'll also need a means of controlling the solenoid, and an Arduino-based solution with a coupled MOSFET works quite nicely. Finally, you'll need assorted connectors and cables, and possibly a few transistors to link your Arduino up to your flash units and camera. The other pieces of this project can be improvised, and I'll just quickly outline my setup. For your basin, I'd recommend a black plastic container with little to no brim. This way you can be flexible with your camera positioning, and the black will prevent unwanted light from reflecting back to the camera. Here, you can see the incredible amount of effort and craftsmanship that went into my setup. I'm using this thing called gravity to feed my solenoid, and it works quite nicely. I'd recommend you use gravity too. Finally, I've placed some different colored backdrops to bounce light off of, which can lead to some pretty cool reflections in the droplets and splashes. I actually opted to leave the shutter open on my camera for one to two seconds, and then execute the droplet events. This way I don't need to worry about the mechanical timings of the camera, and I can fire the flash units directly. I'd also recommend shooting at a low ISO and a high aperture but please do experiment with these settings to see which results are best. I wrote a simple program that I'll provide below and flash it to my Arduino. I've set it up in such a way that I can control how long the solenoid is open, the delay between the first and second droplet, the delay between the first droplet and the camera flash, and the number of shots I want to take. It was then just a matter of experimenting until I achieved interesting results. Of course, these timings will completely depend on your setup. You can also do cool things by keeping all the timings the same, except for when you fire the flash. If you string these images together, you can create a pseudo high speed video, but there is some chaos involved, and no two drops splash exactly the same. This is fun and all, and I'm always blown away by how cool the results can be, but I wanted to take things a step further. If you're anything like me, you probably have an unfinished quadcopter laying around. As a challenge, I wanted to see if I could karate chop a free falling droplet of water in half. To achieve this, I needed to use the propeller, spinning at over 1500 RPM as a timing reference. I happen to have this photo interrupter laying around, so I used that. Similar to the laser trigger discussed earlier, the passing prop interrupts an invisible infrared beam. In my code, this triggers a countdown as to when to release the droplet, and then when to trigger the flash. The prop ends up going through more than 4 rotations after triggering the droplet before an impact actually occurs. If you do the math, this works out to about 160 milliseconds which is pretty close to the trigger time that I ended up using. Now, I don't know about you guys, but considering the hack job that went into this setup, I was pretty impressed with myself. The margin of error here is only a couple of milliseconds, and I was reliably able to karate chop this shit out of these droplets. The fluid dynamics here are also very interesting, but are both beyond the scope of this video and that of my own understanding. 
If you found this video helpful and you end up taking some high speed droplet photography, please share your photos with me as I'd love to see them. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something from this video. Feel free to check out any of my other videos and uh, yeah, until next time. Not she said, what do you know the more?